Hello and welcome to the reading of Little Pear by Fra Eleanor Frances Lattimore. This is our last video in the reading of Little Pear. Today we'll be reading chapter 9. If you haven't read chapters 1 through 8 with us, I hope you'll go back and watch the other six videos and read the chapters that way with us. And in this video we're watching and reading and looking at the last chapter of the book, chapter 9. Chapter 9. Little Pear Falls into the River and Decides to Be Good. Throughout the book, Little Pear has been very mischievous, doing lots of things that he wasn't supposed to so that he can have adventures. And in this chapter, they're telling us that he's going to decide to be good. Rowan is our guest reader. Rowan will be reading the parts of Little Pear. Rowan, do you uh, think that Little Pear will really be good after he falls in the river or just for a little while? Be really good. Rowan thinks that Ro that Little Pear will really be good after he falls in the river. Uh, you can go ahead and make your prediction and we'll read chapter 9 and find out if they tell us or if they leave it for us to decide. Little Pear falls into the river and decides to be good. It was a hot day in the middle of the summer and the sun blazed down on the village and on Little Pear, who was strolling along the street, eating a cucumber. Do you ever eat a cucumber when you stroll along the street? No. No, but I do like cucumbers. His bare feet shuffled through the thick yellow dust. I ah. He sighed. How hot it is. And where are all my friends? The street was deserted. The deserted street. No other friends there. It's deserted. And the reason was that nearly everyone was asleep. It was too hot for most people to want to walk about. It was even too hot for the children to want to play. Little Pear, though, always wanted to be doing something. I know what I shall do. He thought, I shall go and watch the boats on the river. Just then, he saw a child trotting around the corner. He felt quite excited for a minute, because he had walked nearly through half the village and had seen only a pig and a few chickens. <laughs> but when the child came nearer, he saw it was only Big Head's baby brother. The baby was dressed in a little red apron shaped like a diamond. It was all that he had on because Chinese babies don't wear very much in the summer. His head was shaved except for a fringe of hair across his forehead. That was the style. They shaved the whole head but left just a little bit of bangs on the forehead. He was trotting along in a great hurry until he met Little Pear who stopped him. You must not run away, said Little Pear, and he took the baby's hand and led him back to the home of Big Head, who was leaning against the doorway, fast asleep. Little Pear lifted the little brother over the doorstep and gave him the rest of his cucumber. Stay where you are, he said. You might get lost if you run away. <laughs> How would Little Pear know about getting lost? Because he got lost when he ran away to the city at the beginning of the book. So little, Big Head's little brother should believe him. Then he had a good idea. He took the good luck chain off his own neck and put it around the babies. Now you will be safe, he said, because in China, even now, but especially back then, but even now, they believe in good luck. They think that's really true, that the, a little necklace could keep someone safe with luck. We know that's probably not true, but they certainly believe it. He said, and patted the baby kindly on the head and strolled on, feeling very good. Again, he thought, I shall go, oh. Wait. I shall go to the river and watch the ships. And he started off in the direction of the river. What does he not have on anymore? 
Eh. Pink. What? Pink. Little pears not wearing what? Wearing an apron. No, but little pear is not wearing an apron. You're correct. But little pear is not wearing his good luck necklace that his mom gave him anymore. And he believes that that good luck necklace is what has kept him safe through the adventures all throughout the book. And is he wearing his good luck necklace anymore? No. He's not wearing it anymore. Yeah, it's safe. Let's see. It was a long way to the river. Little pear followed the path that cut across the fields and soon left the village far behind him. The sun blazed down on Little Pear as he pattered along in his bare feet. There he is pattering along in his bare feet, no shoes. And the caption says, he soon left the village far behind. Fields were as deserted as the village. There was no one around no sound except for the singing of cicadas in the willow trees as he drew near the river. Have you ever heard of cicada? Yeah. I bet you have, especially this year in 2018 in Texas. We've had a lot of cicadas. In Texas, we usually call them locusts instead of cicadas. Have you ever heard of a locust? Yeah, it's, it's a bug. It's a big bug that makes a loud noise. And every few years, there's more of them than in other years. And this year, 2018, we've had a lot of cicadas, a lot of locusts in Texas. Have you had cicadas wherever you are? Presently, he stood on the high bank, looking down at the river. First, he looked up the river. Then, he looked down the river. And all the time, he remembered to hold tight to a willow tree with both hands. Why does he need to hold tight to the willow tree with both hands? So he won't fall into the river? Yeah, his mom told him not to stand close to the river, but he always holds onto a tree and figures it'll be okay. The river was swift and muddy. The sun shining on it made it the ripples first brown, then blue. The bank opposite Little Pear like the bank he was standing on, was bordered by rough-barked willow trees leaning out over the water. Between, between the banks, the boats went busily up and down. Here, everybody seemed to be very wide awake. Little Pear thought of the sleepy village he had left and was glad that he had come to the river. There were boats, all kinds of boats. Big boats with masts and sails and smaller boats with none, and boats with great fishing nets spread out like huge spider webs. There were flat boats too, laden with things to sell. Some had cabbages and some had rolls of matting and some had bags that might be filled with all sorts of interesting things. Little Pear thought. The big boats had eyes painted on them in front so they could see where they were going. Would painted on eyes help the boats see? No. No, boats can't see. The owners of these boats were careful not to let anything hang over the edge in front of the eyes. For then the boats could not have seen their way as they sailed in and out among the smaller boats. They can't, can't, boats can't see. Boats can't really see, but that was a superstition of the Chinese in the early 1900s. They painted those eyes so the boats wouldn't run into anything. This is a joke in America. It, well, yeah, it seems like one, but that's what they believed back then in that country. And there's the willow tree. It's hanging out right on the edge of the water, leaning over the edge. And there's Little Pear hanging onto that willow tree. Little Pear wished he had a boat of his own, but he couldn't decide whether he would rather have a small one that he could row or a larger one that he could push with a pole or a big one with a sail. Finally, Little Pear decided that what he would like most of all to have when he was grown up would be a fishing boat. For then, he could catch fish for his, what do you think is gonna be fish for his? Uh, dinner. Maybe fish for his dinner. That seems like a good prediction. When we turn the page, we'll find out. 
Here's a caption. He held tight to the willow tree. I hope he won't, won't fall. Because there's the willow tree and it's right on the very edge, right over the water. He's holding on to it. Let's see if Rowan's right that he, for then he could catch fish for his meals, which dinner is a meal. So yeah. Prediction confirmed. And take fish to the city to sell. What fun that would be. There's a fishing boat and they're using that pole to push it down the river. Little Pear held tight to the willow tree and gazed at the ships going up and down. He was wishing that he would have grown up soon when suddenly he saw drawing nearer and nearer the loveliest kind of boat on the river. It was a houseboat. A houseboat. I never ridden on a houseboat. I ha I don't think I have either. Well, a cruise ship is kind of like a houseboat. That's true. Either. That's true. It is similar in some ways. Have you been on a cruise ship? No. Me? Well, I have been on one. I didn't sail on it, but I did get to go on it. That is ki the kind of boat I should like to have thought Little Pear as he watched it drawing nearer and nearer. It was a long flat boat with real little house on it, with a hole in the ceiling for the smoke to go through, and paper windows. A man was walking up and down the side of the deck, shoving with a long pole. Little Pear looked admiringly at the clothes hanging out to dry and watched the children playing about the deck and the boat sailed gaily along until it was quite close to Little Pear. Suddenly, one of the children saw him. He called to his brothers and sisters, and they all flocked to the edge of the boat and waved to Little Pear as he stood alone on the bank. What? Is, is that his family? I think that's the family that lives on the houseboat. Yes. And they just happen to see a little boy standing on the edge of the river. They don't know Little Pear. It made him feel very happy, and without thinking, he let go of his tree to wave back. Ah! Slip when his feet on the steep bank. Slip, slide, and plop into the river fell Little Pear. The brown water whirled round and round him. Rowan, what do you predict is going to happen now that he's fallen into the river? He's going to get, get, get dirty. It's going to get dirty? What happens if you fall into quick moving water? What could happen? You could sink. You could sink. And what happens if you sink to the bottom of water? You could die. Yeah, he could die in that water. So do you think Little Pear is going to die in this book? No. What do you think is going to happen if he's not going to sink and die? What do you predict? He is going to get back onto land. Do you have a guess how he's going to get back onto the land? Yes. How do you think he'll get back onto the land? He'll try swimming up to, back to the willow tree. Let's see if Rowan's prediction is confirmed or denied. If Ro if Little Pear is able to swim at all, and if he swims, if he swims to the willow tree. Do you have a prediction in your head what you think will happen? In circles, so let's see what the last word was. The brown water whirled around and around him in circles as he rose to the surface, choking and sputtering. Ah! cried the children on the boat. He is drowning! He is drowning! For Little Pear could not swim. So he definitely can't swim to the tree if he can't swim. And the swift current was carrying him away from the bank. He splashed around wildly with his wow. arms and he was about to sink again when the man on the boat rushed forward and reached out his pole. Catch hold! he cried. So the man on the houseboat is giving his pole to Little Pear. Let's see what happens. Little Pear couldn't hear what the man said, for there was water in his ears. He could scarcely see the man, for there was water in his eyes. He couldn't say anything himself, for he had swallowed so much water. But he splashed around with his arms, and he caught hold of the pole. 
Then he held on tight while the man pulled him to the side of the boat and lifted him safely to the deck. For some time he lay there, wondering to himself whether he was drowned or not, and thinking that perhaps he would never see his family again. Then he opened his eyes, and he saw above him a circle of faces. He was on the houseboat, and here were the children who had waved to him and the man who had saved him. There was the kindly face of the mother, too, who had hurried out of the little house to see what had happened. Little Pear smiled at them, and they all exclaimed over him, saying what a wonder it was that he wasn't drowned. And they admired his flowered jacket and his green string around his pigtail. Will you stay with us? asked the children. But their mother said, No, this little boy comes from the shore, and his family will wonder where he is. He must go home, and when we come to the next landing place. The boat sailed down, down the river. Little Pear sat drying in the sun, while the children sat around him in a circle, telling him about their life on the river, and asking him eager questions about the land. We have never lived on the land, they told him. Can you imagine children who have never lived on the land? No. They've always lived on a boat their whole life. They've never lived on the land. Because this boat has always been our home. Then Little Pear told them about his village and about his family and friends and his canary. And as he talked, he began to think how glad he would be to see them all again. Those things at home, that is. But the boat sailed on down the busy river, taking Little Pear farther and farther away from home. When they finally reached the next landing place, the houseboat stopped and Little Pear was set ashore. He felt very sorry to say goodbye to his new friends. He climbed the path up the bank and watched until the boat had sailed on, far down the river. The children were still waving to him, but Little Pear held tight to a tree with both hands, because he didn't want to fall into the water again. The boat disappeared around a bend in the river, and Little Pear started for home. Yeah, it was day and then it turned into nighttime. Should Little Pear be walking through the fields alone at night? No. Seems dangerous. I wonder what's going to happen. Away across the fields, the sun was setting. Little Pear walked on and on and on. The way home was long, as the boat had sailed a mile or two down the river. Aya! thought Little Pear. She no be dark. And he hurried and his tired feet along more quickly. He wished that he might meet another kind man like his friend who had taken him into the city. But the path along the riverbank was deserted. Nobody on it, just like in the town. Deserted. The fields were deserted, and it seemed as though in all the world there was nobody except Little Pear. Little Pear walked on and on and on. The sun had been down for a long time, and the night was very dark, when at last Little Pear saw ahead of him the dim outline of the village. Dogs barked at him as he approached. Don't bark, he cried. Don't you know me? This is Little Pear. When he reached his own gateway, the stone lines sat on either side of it and looked very fierce. They... They are roaring now, not laughing, he thought, and he said aloud, Don't bite me. This is Little Pear. He ran across the courtyard to the open house. Open the door, he cried. The, it is Little Pear. Then the door was flung open. It is Little Pear, cried his mother and Dagu and Ergu all at once, throwing their arms around him. How glad Little Pear was to be home again, and how glad his family was to see him. Where have you been? they cried. We have hunted for you all afternoon, and the men are still out with lanterns looking for you. Little Pear told them all that had happened, 
how he had left the village and gone to the river, and how he had fallen into the river and been rescued. Then his mother prepared him some hot food for him, while Dagu put the kettle on to boil, and Ergu sped away to tell the village that Little Pear had returned. Soon there was the sound of many feet in the courtyard, and the tiny room was filled with people. There were Little Pear's father and other men who had been searching with him for Little Pear. There was Ergu, out of breath, with shining eyes, and there were his nearest neighbors and the best friends. There was Big Head, looking very excited, and Big Head's baby brother, eating a tang huler. He still had the good luck chain around his neck. You may keep the ch oh. You may keep the chain, Little Pear told him. For you are very low and something might happen to you. But I am a big boy and I am never going to run away again. Then everybody was very happy. There he is with the caption. There's Big Head's brother with the Ting Hiller, and here's Little Pear speaking to the whole crowd, saying, I am never going to run away again. Then everybody was very happy. They patted Little Pear on the head, and the baby brother gave him the rest of his Tang Hula. We all loved you very much when you were naughty, they said, but we shall love you even more if you are good. I sh will always be a good boy now, Little Pear promised, nodding his head very hard. Ergu looked at her small brother and suddenly felt rather sad. Little Pear is growing up, she said. Sing hey. And here is a little something for you that's the end of the book, end of chapter 9. And this is a little bit more. about the author of this book. And I'll let Rowan read to you this little excerpt about the author of the book, Little Pear. Eleanor Frances Wadmore was... 1904 to 1986. So she was born in 1904 and she died in 1986. Was an American citizen born and raised in Shanghai. 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 She began her career as an artist, but became known as the art oh. author and illustrator of more than 50 popular children's books. A number of her stories are based on her experiences growing up in China. I hope you've enjoyed Eleanor's book, Little Pear, and I hope that you'll watch all the videos to read the whole book with us. And thank you to Rowan for his part reading the book and reading the voice of Little Pear.